What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Randy here with RTS Mobile Gaming bringing you an absolutely phenomenal video today. We are playing the Lord of the Rings Rise to War and in today's video we are talking about my free to play gore bag versus my wailed out undying. We'll be comparing the two builds here and going through this battle report from Fight Club over the weekend. For those of you that were able to make my impromptu late night stream over the weekend, thank you for attending. These are the analysis of some of those reports from that stream. Check this out. So... You can clearly see here, Randy attacked Leia, my two accounts killed each other, and honestly, uh, this battle really, I mean, the Undying came out ahead, quote unquote, but the fact that this is a free-to-play tier 1 commander against a wailed out tier 3 commander, I consider this a victory for Gorbag, okay? So neither one of these builds is especially made to kill the other build, <clears throat> But let's take a look and see how it played out, okay? So, first, as you can clearly see here, the Undying is rocking primarily burn damage with Corsair's Alchemists. And he's using a nice balance of Fell Beasts. If you uh, did not see the stream, you will know that I am starting to mix Fell Beasts into many of my combinations. Because they are extremely tanky units if you have a way to mitigate the range damage they receive. The Undying does just that. The Undying with Fantastic Gear here, uh, through his Dishearten ability and his Nimbleness ability, will reduce the range damage that my Fell Beasts receive quite substantially. So this is going to make it effective to use Fell Beasts in combat because they're no longer going to take 30% bonus damage from ranged. It is significantly mitigated by 21% from Dishearten, another 8% from Nimbleness. And once I hit level 50, this will be 12% from Nimbleness. Um, so very very tanky there Their flying ability is so nice against all enemy melee troops This just reduces the melee damage they receive by 60% from all melee troops whether it's alchemists Reapers whatever it is this will reduce the damage that they receive Okay, so that's why they're slowly becoming one of my favorite tanky units as long as you have good commanders to, to support them as you saw in the report, I do have a good balance of Alchemists and Corsairs, so I am running heavy burn damage with Ring Wraith Tree. Gear-wise, right, we've got the cut list for some damage. Heer Bjork with some burn damage protection. Uh, we have Horseman's Helm with anti-stun. And then Jumps of Moria with some speed and plus attack. Okay. Skill-wise, we have Undead Commander for evasion. Dishearten. Nimbleness. Ring Wraith. Nazgul Screech, and then the R5 Signature Tree for the Undying. We have the Second Win ability, which is the Anti-Heal with a nice healing nuke. And then Fanaticism is stacking melee damage every round. This affects both physical and uh, elemental type damages, okay? There are some other commanders that provide a stacking damage debuff that's only physical. The Undying's Fanaticism affects all damage from melee, okay? So you can see that healing nuke did do 25,480 healing. So that's pretty impressive. All right. As far as Gorbag's build, let's take a quick look at that. The gear is slightly below the Undying's for sure. This is a free-to-play Gorbag. Um, Three-star cutlass, very nice. Excuse me there, I have allergies today. Uh, burn damage on the Hyrbjörk. So this will actually help him against the Alchemist and the Corsairs by reducing their burn damage by 40%. This is not a maxed out chest, but 40% is better than 0% for sure. All right, Bone Mask. This is going to give me some nice HP and then Madness inflicted on the enemy. And then we have Palantir of Orthang for some more damage. Okay, skill-wise, we've really got uh, the R5 Watchman maxed out for damage and Madness immunity. Then we have one point into Corrupting Curse to apply Madness on the enemy. That's the point of this is... This will have a chance to apply Madness uh, in addition to the Helmet. Then we have the R3 tree here for Grey Leader, plus Warlord for 29% damage mitigation. And then a little bit of points in the Tier 0 tree to get the heal, okay? Let's see what happened in the first couple rounds. Get excited, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Excellent. Here it is. So the Felbies coming in hot and heavy, punch them in the face. The, ra the Raiders attack. The Felbies dodge the attack because of Undead Commander. Now they are afflicted by Madness, which is okay. 
Corsair's hitting for 8k damage. The Reapers are stunned from Nazgul Screech. The Alchemist hitting the Reapers for 15k damage. And the Warlords are stunned. So no damage output really from the enemy in round 1 due to double stuns and an evasion. <clears throat> I just avoided 3 damage instances in round 1. That's so nice. That's what's so nice about the Undying. His Undead Commander combines very well with some of these other abilities, okay? Here, going into round two, the Fell Beast resists Madness. The Raiders finally get some attacks off. 3,000 damage. Gorbag hits. The Corsairs punch back in the face. Here's an Azul Screech. The Reapers, their attack is dodged. This is going to be the majority of the damage that Gorbag is going to deal today. Is going to be Reapers and Warlords. And the Reapers have now been dodged. The Alchemists have now dodged a second attack. And then punch the Warlords in the face. And the Warlords, there's not a whole lot of them left alive. I've killed most of them at this point. Oh my goodness. They've only got 104 Warlords left. So yeah, the bulk of the damage is going to be the Reapers. If I continue to dodge the Reapers' damage output with the Undying, that is going to cause a lot of problems. Okay. The Alchemists do not dodge the next Reaper Assault. 5302 Reapers punch the Alchemist directly in the face for 20,550 here in round three. The, the Reapers, the main damage dealers for this army, just got off their first bit of damage. Very nice. The Alchemists have no shame in punching the Reapers back in the face here. Another 14k damage. The Alchemists have now dropped their avoidance so they can no longer dodge. And here is the Undying's Heal Nuke. The Fell Beast did not get any healing. I wonder why. Have they even taken damage yet? I don't even know if the Fell Beast took damage yet, guys. The Fell Beast may not have taken damage yet. Uh, but the Alchemist and the Corsairs sure enjoyed that healing nuke. Alright. The Warlords are now down for the count. The Reapers punching the Alchemist in the face for another 17,000. The Alchemists here, their damage is really starting to stack up because now they have an additional 20% damage from Fanaticism. So not only do they have 30% damage increase from Ring Wraith uh, as far as damage received, now they have a 20% of their own personal damage buff from Fanaticism. 15k punch in the face. Gorbag's Hysteria... Coming in hot and heavy for the next round. I do not see it actually helping him. The Reapers now have their damage boosted. Okay. The Reapers, with boosted damage, hitting the Alchemist directly in the face for 26, 496. Very nice. Oh, yeah. Here's the Undying's Fanaticism just continuing to stack up. Corrupting Curse inflicts madness on the Corsairs. So look at that, guys. The R5 ability with one point in it did successfully inflict madness on the Corsairs. Very nice to see that. Unfortunately, the Corsairs resisted the madness, which is one of the risks of running madness. Uh, oh, 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 all my, all my alchemists are almost dead. <laughs> oh my goodness. Only Corsairs are alive, guys. I'm almost out of Alchemists. Have my Felbies even taken damage yet? <laughs> the Alchemists are down. In the end of round 7, guys, the Alchemists are round. Corrupting Curse does not trigger on the Corsairs in round 7. The Corsairs with, how many are left alive? How many Corsairs are left alive? 20, uh, 2,904 Corsairs hit the Reapers for 10,295 damage. So the Reapers are significantly out damaging my army at this point. So later in the fight, guys, once the Alchemists are down, 
The Reapers are clearly gaining ground. Even with my stacking debuff, the Reapers are clearly gaining, gaining ground with their higher damage output. Here's the next Corrupting Curse on my Corsairs. They do not get inflicted by Madness here. Interesting fight. Interesting fight. The Corsairs with their full damage stack. How many do we have left? How many Corsairs are left? I don't even know. 1,900 Corsairs with a full 50% damage stack hitting for almost 12k. Not too bad. Interesting, guys. That was an interesting fight. I like that. Uh, long story short, it looks like it was a combination of gore bags, the Grey Leader combined with Orcus Warlord, which is a 29% damage mitigation, combined with the chest piece for another 40%. Now we're at 69% damage mitigation to burn. Okay, that probably helped. The 60% damage mitigation was partially negated by the Ring Wraith, which gives 30% increased damage received, taking us back on down to about 39% reduced burn damage received for Gorbag's army. Okay, so he was able to, to significantly reduce the damage by almost half. However, um, his Reapers didn't deal any damage for the first three rounds of the fight which is a pretty big deal when you consider that the majority of the damage output for Gorbag was the 6200 Reapers. So, due to the Undying's ability to stun the enemy in round 1 and dodge 4 of the first physical damage received for each of his units, massively reducing the damage output by Dishearten here, 21%, really helped mitigate the effectiveness of the Reapers in completely eviscerating and slaughtering my Alchemists and Corsairs, okay? So you heard it here, folks. I love you all a long time. Happy frickin' Monday fun day. It is uh, gonna be 5 a.m. here soon, so I'm gonna go ahead and get to work. Randy out.